Well, I haven't really had a lot of time to work on the Healy. I've done a few um, bits and pieces and the weather's been pretty cold so it's not good for spray painting. Um, I thought I'd just backtrack a little bit and, and show you a tool that I made for removing the rear hub nut um, off the back of the Healy. Um, Healy's and MGA's and probably quite a few other cars have a very large octagonal nut um, on the back axle on each side. One side's a left hand thread and one side's a right hand thread and I I can't remember the size of the nut exactly but it's it's almost two inches in size so getting a socket that can fit that is quite difficult so you may well wonder why I'm showing this but this is a front hub off an MGA uh, an old one off my MGA because I replaced the hubs um, and this is a tool that I made uh, excuse my welding here I deliberately just piled that on to hold it um, using one of these hubs as a basis I discovered that if I cut through here and take this flange off, just cut through there, I end up with a circle which is about the same outer diameter as um, the nut on the back of the Healy. Uh, and then what I did was I, it looks a bit rough but it's not too bad, I welded in some sections here, some pieces of steel, just little flat bits of steel. I think I rounded them off slightly so that they would match the radius there. So I welded in eight of those and that gave me a um, octagonal socket. This tube here is welded in the middle. That's actually a brake rod, or the remains of a brake rod, brake bar off a 1926 Bullnose Morris Oxford that I just happen to have lying around the shed as you do. Um, and the idea is that this actually slides inside the axle housing and then that Hexa uh, octagonal socket grips on the nut. Um, so you can see how that's been done and I got an old uh, end off an old um, socket set I had here and welded that on there so I could use a, a three-quarter inch, uh, no actually I think it's a half inch socket on there. So it looks rough but it worked a treat and it didn't really take me very long to make. So if you can find an old axle, uh, front um, hub rather, off an MGA, uh, you'll discover that the measurement on the inside here, across here, is pretty much the same as the outside measurement of the nut on the Healy. And then by faffing around a bit and welding in a few bits of steel in there, you can make up an octagonal socket and it worked really, really well. You don't have to have this extension bar in there, but I thought it would help to locate it. So this fits very snugly inside that tube. Um, really, um, I was very pleased with that. I can't demonstrate it really without taking off the back hub, uh, back brake drum and everything, which I'm not going to. So I just thought I'd uh, backtrack a bit and, and show that. It might inspire somebody. Um, I've done a little bit of welding. Uh, we're getting ourselves caught up here. Um, a little bit of welding on this piece here which goes over the um, firewall, I suppose, and fits over the um, gearbox housing, uh, which I welded up in the last video. This was the base of this was pretty well gone, so I cut and made some new pieces which have been welded in there um, and there. Uh, this is painted, of course, it'll be painted, uh, and then it's covered with carpet so um, you don't see any of that really uh, but it's necessary probably for sound deadening and all sorts of other stuff um, as far as the car itself goes I've done a few little bits and pieces um, some of which isn't visible one of the first things I did was set the valve gaps um, to about 12 thou uh, it's 12 thou hot so I actually set it to 14 thou cold and we'll see how we go with that I was a bit concerned I might not have got the the uh, cam lined up properly uh, when I refitted the, the cam chain when I did the uh, engine rebuild but it all seems to be okay. Um, if I get number one at top dead centre on the compression stroke then valves 12 and 13 that's right isn't it? Yes 12 and 13 are just in um, just in sort of uh, just one's opening the other one's closing so that, that is pretty well where it's supposed to be I think. Um, I've made up some leads here new leads. One point with these is that um, 
I've discovered it's pretty important to use copper cord leads. There are a lot of modern cars on the market, of course, a lot of modern leads available, which I think might have a carbon or a silicon core. I had some trouble with misfiring on my MGA uh, with that because, of course, the, the cap on these has a screw which pierces through these leads um, with a point on the end and makes contact, and it doesn't seem to work quite as well with modern carbon or silicon cord leads. Um, so that's something to, to consider. Um, I've fitted the radiator in and the top hose there. I've got the other hose for the other side but I haven't put it on yet. And that's um, the new radiator which I had a new core put into. Um, I fitted on the um, fuel inlet here and a new fuel pump. Um, the fuel pump I've used is not the same as the original one. Um, it's an electronic SU pump, which you can see down there. It's actually designed for an MGB, and I think some Jaguars use them as well. It puts out about 15 uh, gallons an hour, I think is, is the measurement, or 17, I can't quite remember, but it, it should be enough for this engine. Um, they use an LC, LCM, I think they call them, the square ones that are fitted on there. They're very expensive to buy. Um, this one should do the trick. Somebody had cut the fuel lines, um, so I've used this system here uh, with the banjo bolts, which isn't original to the Healy, uh, but I think should work okay. I had to make up a new fuel line there to go into the fuel tank. That was missing completely, and I made that using some steel brake line, which I bought. Well, actually, I got it given to me um, new, um, and that bent up okay. So I don't know whether these little joints here will leak. I guess I'll find out when I switch the pump on, but um, I'm happy that the pump will deliver enough. I'm staying with a, a positive earth. I know it was originally positive earth and I'm not particularly fussed one way or the other. Um, and really, unless you want to fit a radio or something like that, it's, um, it, it doesn't make a huge difference. So uh, that's probably the progress so far, not a lot to tell, just a few little bits and pieces. There's that uh, section there that I welded up in the last time, which has got to be cleaned up and de-rusted and painted. Um, and this little piece here, which I just talked about, that little bit there, uh, just fits over this section here uh, and locates onto the this, this gearbox housing. So that's it so far. I think that the next step is to finish painting the bonnet and the boot, which I have in primer, but the weather got too cold to put top coat on. Um, I also have some little uh, repair pieces there from Kilmartins for uh, my front guards, uh, which I'll show you when I come to actually do some um, cutting and repair work on the front guards, which is probably the next bit of major welding that I'll undertake. Um, so. That's about it. Uh, again, the progress so far.